Okay, so what I did here is um, I'm continuing from the previous uh, recording and get this. There we go. And uh, what I did is I calculated these two numbers to get this number right here. And now, as you can see, I can solve for t um, by um, adding this over and dividing by 3.81. So I will do that. Um, t is going to be 1618.65 divided by 3.81. So let's do that. Perfect. Tension is 425.96 newtons. And that's the answer. So that's good. And there you have it. So that's the tension in our rope right here. Now let's solve for this. So I can use Newton's laws to actually solve for those. So let me give myself a little space here. Move this out of the way. All right, so let's look at the sum of the forces in the X and in the Y. Now it's in equilibrium, so they're both gonna equal to zero, like that. So let's see. If you take a look at the forces in the X, the only forces we have, and I'll try to highlight them, is the FX right, right here, and the tension. Notice how they're completely horizontal. So, tension, um, and I just chose this as positive. I'm not even sure if that's true, but let's do that. So, F of wall of X minus tension equals zero newtons, like that. And in fact, we've solved that. That was really easy. So the wall in the x direction is equal to the tension, which we already have. So done. That's the x component. So see the value in using the torque here. But now let's look at the y. We have bas basically we have the force of the wall of the y. And I made it up. I just chose up minus the weight of the pole, minus the weight of the traffic light. Like that, and we can set that equal to zero, like that. I think that's, that's all of them, right? Because this is completely down, this is completely down. And there you have it. So, cool. So that means that if I add these two up, that the weight of uh, the wall is just going to be the sum of the weights. Like that. Which means the um, mass of the pole plus, well, I'll just do it like this. Taking shortcuts. So the mass of the pole is the, was it the 12? I think it was the 12. Yep, the 12. Okay, let's bring that back down. So 12 times 9.81 plus the traffic light, which is the 21.5 times 9.81. And when I do that, that 328.64 newtons as the force wall line. And there we go, force of the wall X and Y, did it want, let me see. Yeah, it just wanted the horizontal and vertical components, so we're actually done with the problem. So there you have it, that's how you can solve this, um, you know, static equilibrium problem using torque to eliminate a force to make this a little easier. And again, what I did by dropping down the forces is made them so that the radius and the force are perpendicular. Notice that I had to use a different R for that instead. Now you could do the problem by taking the angle between, you know, using this right here and using that angle and then find the force using the sine. Um, you could do that. That's another way to do it the same way, but then you would use these distances. Um, but that's up to you. Um, this is just a, another way to solve a problem like it. So, all right, let's try another problem. So we're going to shift gears and do some energy problems now, rotational energy. So let's solve the first one, which is the merry-go-round. Um, merry-go-round has that mass and radius. How much net work 
is required to accelerate from rest from one revolution per eight seconds, okay? So, um, let's see, network, we have a change in velocity. So immediately when I see that, I think of, you know, the work energy theorem. Like that. So what is our question was the network? Perfect. So if I find the change in rotational kinetic energy, I will find the network on our system. So this will be the approach that I'm going to take. So um, if I rewrite this, it's going to be one half, and this is rotation because we're rotating here, I omega squared final minus one half I omega additional squared like that. Okay, but the cool thing is this starts from rest, so this whole thing goes away. So the net work is going to equal to one half moment of inertia final velocity. All right, so our trick is to figure out what our I is, because that's going to be dependent on the shape and what our my final, you know, um, angular um, final angular speed. So usually in the problem it tells me a little bit about what kind of, you know, what moment of inertia we have. So we're assuming a solid cylinder. So if I look up the solid cylinder, um, let's pretend I did, give me two seconds, one, two, oh, there it is. Um, we'll find that we'll have one half mr squared is our i like that. So I got that from the, the assume the solid cylinder like that, so like a disk. Um, and then I have to convert this, um, you know, revolution per eight seconds to radians per second. So let's do that too. So I have one revolution per eight seconds times in one revolution. Uh, I have two pi radians. So if I do two pi divided by 8, I get 0 0.785 radians a second. So the revolutions cancel and we have radians per second, which is good. Great, so that's going to be our final omega. So we get the net work is going to equal to 1 half my i, which is also 1 half m r squared times my um, angular um, speed squared like that. So that's our official setup. So let me plug in our numbers. This becomes one fourth. The mass is 1640. The um, radius is 7.5 and we're going to square that number times the 0 0.78 5 radians a second, we're also going to square that number. Squared, squared, and let's go ahead. We're done. So 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 times 1640 times 7.5 squared times 0.785 squared. So we get uh, 14 to 11 points. Let's round to 7 joules. That's the network done by the merry-go-round like that. So there is, um, yeah, that's number one. Let's go to a clean slide and do number two. Okay, so we have a sphere with that radius and that mass. Starts from rest and rolls without slipping down the incline. So let's draw this out. So we have some radius like this. This thing is going down this incline, which is 30 degrees, like that. We know the mass of the object. Um, so calculate the transitional and rotational speeds when it reaches the bottom. What is the ratio between the energies at the bottom? Okay, so uh, we do know the length of this. Um, this was, let's take a look, uh, 10 meters long. That's the length. So what we can do is uh, we can actually get the height 
from that, so h right here. This is a sine, so if I do 10 times sine 30, uh, we get the height of this as 5 meters like that. Um, great. So then what we're going to do is uh, basically for part A, I'm going to use the conservation of energy to solve this out. So when we use conservation of energy, we now have to remember that this actually has two types of energies. Um, we have rotational and translational. So um, the initial energy is all going to be potential since both the object's not rolling or moving at the top. So the only energy we have is MGH, essentially, the, um, the potential energy. And we're going to set that equal to the translational energy plus the rotational energy. Um, and of course, these are at the bottom, so those are our final cases like that. So um, the question is asking for both of these at the bottom. So what I'm going to do actually is just rewrite my omega. If you remember, V is equal to our omega, where omega over um, omega is, sorry, get rid of that. If I solve for omega, we get V over R. So I'm actually going to plug that in to here. So let's keep going. We'll see there's a reason why I do that. I get 1 half M V final squared plus 1 half. The I, I need the I of a sphere, which I looked up um, as 2 fifths M R squared, okay? So that's my I, 2 fifths m r squared. And then this is going to be v over r squared. Now I wrote it like this, so now it's all in the same term, vf. And then of course I can go back for this. So let's see, watch what happens, 1 half m v final squared plus these go away. I get one fifth like that. I get MR. Now these are both squared. Let me just do that because we're applying the square. And you can see by doing that, this R cancels that R. So I get one fifth M V final squared. So there's the beauty of this is you can see how we get this relationship, and then notice that masses cancel, exciting, so I get GH is equal to one half VF squared plus one fifth VF squared. Now if I write this in terms of a common denom denominator, make that the right number, which is the five, such as ten, I can write GH is equal to I make this 10, 5 over 10, VF squared, plus 2 over 10, VF final squared. You'll see that that GH, 5 plus 2 is 7 tenths, VF squared. Or in other words, what we get here um, is we're solving for the VF final, so the 10 and the 7 invert so we could get rid of it. So 10 over 7, GH equals VF squared. And then if we square root this. So there we have it. Um, we can find our VF. So if we do that, 10 times 9.81. times 5, because that's the height, over 7 will give us our final VF. I can do this in 30 seconds. Behold, the final answer for VF is 8.37. In the next video, I'll find the omega F. There you go. Like that.